Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Now, tonight, we are going to do something that I think you're going to enjoy. I've asked um, some of the... Um, oh, for heaven's sakes, look what got stuck to my glasses here. These are trading stamps. <laughs> you know, I don't know, wherever you go, now you get trading stamps. I mean, in the drugstores and gas stations and the... In, uh, in meat markets, every place. As a matter of fact, I got these for paying a parking ticket in Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, in Beverly Hills, they give you trading stamps when you pay your fines. <laughs> Any place. And, and they have them, really, wherever you go. I know one fella in Beverly Hills was so happy you see, he was arrested 10 times, and now he only needs two jaywalks and a U-turn to fill his book. <laughs> but they do. I, gosh, I never, you can't go any place. You get these. My pockets have been full of, full of these uh, trading stamps, you know. And uh, the other day, I'm going to tell you something I did. I put, by mistake, I put some on a letter that I mailed, you see. And it was so embarrassing. I mean, the post office was very nice about it, though. They, um, they didn't mail my letter, but they sent me a percolator. <laughs> I, um... And now, ladies and gentlemen, this thing that I told you that I, we were going to do tonight that I thought you'd enjoy, I'm going to have the, my announcer, Don Wilson, come out and explain it to you. Oh, Don! Don Wilson, would you come out here, please? I love it, Benny. Carlo. What are you doing here? Well, Daddy sent me to take his place. He couldn't make it here tonight. What do you mean your daddy couldn't make it? Well, last night he fell down and broke his leg. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Harlo. I, if I'd have known it, I'd have sent my doctor over to see him, you know. No, he's a veterinarian, he might have shot him. <laughs> but, uh, Harlow, I still think that your daddy had a lot of nerve sending you over here to take his place without telling me. You never liked me. <laughs> well, Harlow, I haven't got anything against you personally. You know, but this is a big show. I owe something to my sponsor and to my public. And anyway, I still say your father should have let me know that he couldn't be here. Well, he was afraid to. Why? Two years ago, when he had pneumonia, he told you about it. But you made him come to the studio anyway. Harlow. By the time he got home, we had to take him to the hospital. Well, how did I know it was going to rain? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Harlow, look. As long as your dad isn't here, I'll have to take over and I won't need you. But, Mr. Benny, give me a chance. I can announce as well as my father does. Oh, Harlow, no, look at that. I, I've been going to an elocution school. It teaches all the latest things. But listen. How now, brown cow? How now, green cow? How now, purple cow? How now, chartreuse cow? Wait a minute. Brown cow, purple cow? That's Green? for color television. <laughs> Harlow. Don't you get it? That's a joke. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> now, look, Harlow, as long as I'm stuck with you, will you stand over there backstage, and when I need you, I'll call you. But, Mr. Benny, I have a poem I wrote that I want to read. But look, I, I have, we haven't got time for a poem. But, Mr. Benny, it's not very... Go good. now, fat cow! <laughs> Because, I don't know, I've known him for such a long time, since he was a little boy. You know, Harlow was actually... He learned to walk when he was three weeks old. That's a fact. He had to. Nobody could pick him up. <laughs> now, 
if Don Wilson were here, he would explain this next thing that I told you about, but he's not, so I'll try and do it myself. Would you open the curtains, please? Thank you. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you know, ever since I've been on television, once or twice a year, I've done sort of an amateur show where I've introduced new talent. You know, people who, who haven't had a chance to be seen. And I've been asked so many times, what happens to these people? So I had my producer check into it, you know, and bring back the one who has had the greatest success after appearing on my show. And it's really quite a thrill. I understand she has just arrived. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to meet Miss Lisa Porter. you do, Miss Porter? I must say it's very nice to see you again. Thank you, Mr. Benny. And you know, if I recall when you appeared on my show that time, at that time as an amateur then, of course, that you sang an opera number, didn't you? Yes, that's true. I sang One Kiss from New Moon, uh -huh. and that's what started me on my career. Well, I'm awfully glad uh, to hear that. Now, of course, we may have, might have had at that time viewers who didn't happen to see that show or hear you sing that number. So would you mind doing it now? I'd be glad to. All right. One kiss, one man to save it for. That was just wonderful. And you know, I remember now when you sang that number on my show that I predicted then that with that beautiful voice, you'd really have great success. I know, Mr. Binney, and I'm so grateful to you because it was your faith in me that gave me the encouragement to go out and make good. Well, I'm, I'm glad. And it's nice to know, it's gratifying, that, that there's so many people who like that kind of music, you know. Well, a lot of people do. However, you know, when you tour extensively, you have to make certain adjustments in your repertoire mm -hmm. in order to have a broader appeal. Oh, that's, that's understandable. As yes. a matter of fact, the number that's requested the most of me is my rendition of Body and Soul. Wherever I go, they request that. Well, Body and Soul is a beautiful number. Would you do that for us? I'd be glad now. to. Okay. Uh, Mr. Merrick, if you please.
heard of. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to apologize. I mean, if that's what happens to the winners of our amateur... I certainly am not going to bring back the losers. I never saw anything like this. Harlow. Harlow, if you want to be on a big show like this, you've got to use your head. Now, look, when I ask you to bring out the screen, you put it in front of me. Now, any moron would have put it in front of her instead of me. You're so right. <laughs> Harlow, do me a favor. Don't aggravate me and get off the stage. You never did like me. <laughs> Harlow, I do like you. Then why don't you let me read my poem? Because we haven't got time for a it's, poem. It's uh, very short, and I wrote it myself. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, maybe it'll calm things down for a while there. All right. It's called An Ode to California. An Ode to California? All right, go ahead. It's over with. An Ode to California. <laughs> C is for the climate that we're blessed with. A is for the air so bright and pure. Where's he been? L is for the lazy life we live here. I is for the Il Segundo sewer. That's El Segundo, not Il Segundo, unless you're living there. F is for the freeways we have miles of. O is for the oranges we squeeze. R is for the riptides in the ocean. N is for the nose with which we sneeze. What's that got to do with California? I is for the island Catalina. A is for the actors on TV. Put them all together, they spell California, the state where only smog is free. <laughs> Talented. Oh, he certainly is. <laughs> you know, Don, that was a wonderful idea you had, telling Jack you broke your leg so Harlow could have this chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what'd you turn it off for? Well, we saw Harlow. Why watch the rest of the show? 